Let's get on it. Good day, everybody. You're watching Beyond the Test Drive, and I have spent the week driving this 2025 CX-70. Now, we are completely over the whole CX-90, CX-70. It's just a CX-90 with the rear seat delete. We're over that. We're not going to discuss that too much. I'll go ahead and rant a little bit right now that, yes, I was disappointed, as a lot of folks were when the CX-70 came out. And we were all kind of looking for that X5 kind of sized car, uh, but Mazda doubled down. And when you think about it, Mazda gets a little bit of criticism for their cars being on the smallest size for the class, even the CX-90. There was some criticism that it wasn't spacious inside like some of the competition. So Mazda's like, well, here's a two row for you. And we beat most of the competition, if not all, in the fact that this is one of the best sized two rows you can get. So anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of that in a nutshell. The CX-90, you know, I guess the bottom line here is maybe this makes a better two row than a three row as far as the overall body configuration. So anyway, we do have a top of the line here. This is the Premium Plus Turbo S, and this one is in a phenomenal crystal soul red metallic. When this showed up, I looked at it, I went, wow, that's a lot of red. But after a week, holy smokes, I've kind of fallen in love with this color, as you can see with the sun hitting it right here. It's just phenomenal. And this CX-70 this week, Unlike the CX-90 that we've reviewed a couple times, I'll put links. We got lots of CX-90 content up there if you're interested. This one, people turn their heads. They look at this thing <laughs> as it's rolling around uh, because it is striking. The big thing with the CX-70 versus the 90 is Mazda did kind of restyle this. They gave it a new front bumper and grill, new rear bumper, everything is blacked out. So you have blacked out, all the chrome is gone. These higher trims, this is body colored. You're gonna see black cladding in the lower trims. Even this down here where Mazda, this is even smoked out. Great, you get some special wheels or different wheels in the 90. So overall with the blacked out trim and some of the differences here, this does visually come off as a little bit smaller. This is definitely the sportier looking of the two. But the main reason you're getting this is this back area here. Again, this is a better two row than a CX-90 is a three row when it comes to storage. This have this big area back here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down, this cargo cover here, but really, really, I think you're like 40 cubic feet. Very, very, you know, kind of class leading. Mazda's gotten some criticism about kind of leaving these panels in here. They're not really cup holders anymore, but little places to throw things. The other nice thing about the CX-70 the CX-90, you just kind of pull the rear seats down, but there is no second row release like you have here. Again, you're buying this for space, so Mazda has made this your cargo hauler. The other thing is, you do have some under room storage like the 90 here, uh, but also keep in mind that you do get, you do get your spare tire there. Here's our Bose woofer down there. So spare tire is on the inside. And if you pull this up even further, you get a little bit of storage here that you did not have in the 90. And if I go around, I get a little bit more storage there. Again, little areas, I'm not sure, you know, <laughs> Mazda tried to give you a little bit more room uh, than the regular 90. But good storage space in there. This does have kick to close, I think. Yep, there it goes. So if you just need two rows, you are gonna win the space wars with some of the competition. I think like the Lexus RX. You know the nice thing about whether it's the 90 or the 70 is just how wide these doors open, how easy it is to hop in. Keep in mind, this is the Premium Plus uh, top trim. So this is the Napa leather. This is all goosed out pretty good with this large sunroof. But whether you get the lower trim or these top trims, you should be very satisfied with the interior as far as the space and the headroom, the seat comfort. Uh, Mazda is really into the more simplistic, elegant interior and it, and it really does work. So uh, Mazda gets, gets thumbs up for the interior design here. Interestingly enough, there is no vents in the back. So 
Whereas the 90 does have air vents in the back for zone climate or the extra air vents. Keep that in mind if you're thinking about hauling around a pet uh, back there. Uh, this will probably do just fine for most occasions, but they did, you know, when folks say, oh, they didn't make any changes, they just took the third row. Well, they also took the air vents out back there too. Seat pockets on both sides. I think almost all trim levels get these uh, sunshades in the back. Most of the higher trims get foldable mirrors. Again, check out all of our CX-90 coverage. It pretty much applies here. The beauty of the interior, I'll go ahead and start this out. All but the base trims. Let's let that thing chime. Okay. All right, thank you, Mazda. All but the base trims get this really nice digital instrument clusters, like 12.3 inch cluster. Mazda has done an excellent job of just not. Hey, one of my favorite podcasts there, the uh, Everyday Driver guys. So they have not cartooned up their digital instrument cluster. It's just easy on the eyes, very nice to look at, very simplistic to use. You get all the typical Mazda controls on the wheel. This is a special two tone wheel you only get on this top, top trim. Uh, but man, does it look good? It feels good. And that's very nice. The other thing that Mazda gets, cre you know, should get lots of credit for is all of their heating and cooling, seat heating, steering wheel, all that stuff is all buttons along here. Very easy to use once you kind of understand what button does what. You're not fumbling through a touch screen to do anything. There's just not a lot of nooks and crannies. You get your cup holders here, which work out really good as far as positioning, as far as your elbows, all that stuff. This falls nice to hand, this shifter. We've talked about that as far as getting used to this, and I'm used to it now. I've been in the 90 so many times, and now the 70 that uh, this works out pretty good. You do have uh, uh, your surround view camera. I'll get into what trims get that again out on the drive there. And you do get a hill descent control along with the off-road mode and towing mode. If you go up one trim level uh, from the base, you get about 5,000 pounds of towing, uh, and you also get towing modes there. Other thing, Apple CarPlay, let's see. We do have Apple CarPlay and you can either scroll around in your, uh, with your command wheel, very controversial, but at least now Mazda has given us the ability to touch whether it's Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. It, it works really good. This one's not too bad to touch. It's pretty close, uh, especially your passenger. They can, they can work that if they're not familiar with any of this. Again, all of, this is, really looks good. There's just no nooks and crannies to catch anything. You do have a wireless charger that's standard. Uh, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android are also standard even on the base model. This works okay. Your phone has to be sitting just right. If your phone case is too thick, it's not going to do the trick. Uh, you do have this clamshell opening here with two extra USB-Cs. Just not a lot of storage there. If you look down at the door pockets there, you know, one bottle there, pretty good. The other thing I want to mention is on these top trims, you get this power adjustable steering wheel up and down, which is kind of nice. A little bit of a first... Uh, world luxury there. Oh, and all trim levels of the CX-70 come with paddle shifters. Everything just feels good. You turn your vents off here. We were just in a Toyota Crown, 50 some thousand dollars also. One of Toyota's nicest interiors. Uh, but as far as overall, just feeling of touching everything, knobs, buttons, you know, Mazda just always yeah, wins. Whoops. Mazda just always wins there. Okay. I see a little bit of horn action nice horn again this one does have the big pano roof but even the base models come with your standard uh, size sunroof so that's also pretty nice you do get a lot of ambient lighting as you go up through you get more and more sort of lighting features as you go up through the trim levels this one does have nice ambient lighting all the way around i'll put the power and horsepower numbers up here but what we get here under the hood is mazda's sweet sounding inline six turbocharged 48 volts mild hybrid system just kind of squeeze that there put that up there i know it's kind of clicky clacky and sounding loud in the camera here but it's actually a pretty quiet idling uh engine there is a hybrid just like in there is a p head plug-in hybrid just like in the cx90 uh, but this one's pumping out 340 horsepower 369 pound-feet of torque again moving through at eight-speed transmission 
eight-speed transmission got all the headlines last year and but I'm gonna talk about how that has definitely improved over time as Mazda has figured out how to better tune that with software now if you start out in the base trims you're gonna get 280 horsepower uh, a little less but still good torque numbers 300 and some pound feet of torque you know Mazda I I'm kind of over you two tiered horsepower you know I don't know it's a tuning thing right that's something with the wastegate on the turbo you know just just have one uh, 340 is a healthy number very competitive number and would be nice to get in the lower lower price range all right let's take this out for a drive because that is where whether it's a CX-90 or a CX-70 for a big SUV you know it drives like a Mazda so let's get it out on the road okay let's go ahead and pop it in reverse here what are you mad about now oh, see I'm too close to that there we go so lots of beeping and alarming going off here you can see the steerable grid lines over here uh, this camera system works really well again I think it should be standard you should not have to go up and trim levels to get this camera while we just kind of pull out of this parking lot here let's go ahead and talk about the transmission let's get that out of the way you know when I reviewed the CX-90 last year that was the 2024 when they just come out with it I really didn't have a lot of issues with it yes it was a little stuttery at slower speeds every once in a while it would do something pretty weird I would say it has definitely improved here in this 2025 model I know owners have been brought in to reflash their tuning and I think Mazda is just going to continue to tune this transmission as they learn about it and they get millions of miles it's better uh just kind of tool I think the thing with me is first second and third gear are so short that once you start out or driving like this uh, you're going to go through a lot of gears and you're going to feel that shifting as you slow down you're going to feel those downshifts but once you get on it it moves through the gears pretty fast but it's an eight speed so the first three gears are pretty low uh, combined with that 48 volt i think it's like 16 horsepower electric motor some extra torque to fill in the gaps there uh, it moves along pretty good and shifts pretty well okay as we tool along here let's go ahead and talk about the pricing and the trim levels again this starts out with the turbo preferred that's 280 horsepower that's just a little over forty thousand dollars now you do have to add destination into all these prices again that comes standard with paddle shifters you get the wireless carplay and charger you do get that power lift gate smart key sunroof leather seating standard all-wheel drive you get four-way powered front seats they are also heated and you do get the 12.3 inch screen there but you just get regular old analog gauges on that base model you really need to jump up to the turbo premium which comes in a little 45.9 i think it is you get that's where you get the 21 inch wheels you get the kick to open on the power lift gate you jump to 5,000 pounds of towing you get the eight-way power driver's seat and you get that 12 speaker bose which is pretty sweet sounding in the cx70 and your instrument cluster goes all digital oh and you also get the heads up display if you go premium plus we're getting close to 50 now at 48.9 you get a de-icer for the windshield wiper you get the folding mirrors which also dim you get the larger sunroof you get that 150 watt accessory plug in the back which is which is really nice feature to have if you like to camp or something you get eight-way passenger seat also and that's where you start showing the napa leather heated steering wheel the front seats become ventilated uh, and the heated rear seats uh, is where they become heated also and key to that trim level is the 360 degree surround camera okay if you drop up to the turbo s this is where you get the 340 horsepower which is basically a tune uh, you kind of lose a couple things but you know like the 150 watt uh, power thing that you get on the premium plus base engine uh, but you do get adaptive front lighting and you get fancier wheel options and uh, you start losing that black cladding around the bottom you get the color match cladding and then the final the one that we're driving today is this premium plus that's where you get the fancier leather uh, you're back to the napa you get that 150 watt uh, power source back you get this two-tone steering wheel and you get some you know you get some better ambient lighting so for me gosh darn it if it had that if it had that surround view camera i think that turbo uh premium at 45.9 is the way to go in the value if you're gonna jump up to the turbo turbo s 
you know, the 340 horsepower, which I do recommend, I would just stick to the Turbo S Premium at 52. I actually think that's a good a buy. Again, it's it's kind of hard to say these prices are good buys, but that's the world we live in. All right, before we talk fuel economy, I do want to thank each and every one of you for pressing play today for our subscribers. Huge thank you for supporting us. We really appreciate that. If you're new here, check out all of our content over on our channel. Check us out on Instagram at Beyond the Test Drive. And uh, if you like what you see, we would definitely like you to follow us and subscribe here on Beyond the Test Drive. We would love to have you along for the ride. Okay, so some quick comments on fuel economy. This is rated for 25 overall. Again, whether you get the base model 280 or this one, it's roughly the same. 28 out on the highway. I did not do a highway run in the CX-70. I did do one in the CX-90. Check that link out up there. Okay, so this is our challenging We'll get back to the fuel economy in a second, but this is our challenging uphill dig. So let's get on it. All right. Okay, back to fuel economy. All right, that's pretty good guys. That's, that's a really good dig. Hopefully you heard that sweet sounding in line six. There may be some pumped in sound. I'm not quite sure pretty sure there is but it still sounds pretty good uh, from an inline six does it sound like a BMW b58 inline no but it's it's not bad inline sixes do have that unique sound and they've captured it here okay back to fuel economy real quick I did not do a highway run in this so check out that video I think I put the link in there already in that video you'll see returned 28 to 29 mpg which is pretty much on par with what the EPA says we also took this cx90 on a road trip check out that video uh, we got over 30 mpgs and then this week just tooling around we've gone about 300 miles we just filled it up uh, yesterday we're averaging 27 so that's basically doing roads like this running to the store a little bit out on the highway so i'm going to give Mazda, i'm going to give Maz the big props uh for making this a very competitive big SUV fuel mileage wise again it has a lot to do with that 48 volt hybrid system also okay first things first so everybody seems to like 0 to 60 so we scoped out this road already for safety purposes I will go ahead and put it into sport mode and I will turn for the zealots I will turn traction control off okay I stop is on. Maybe I should turn that off too. All right, there we go. All right, one, two, three, let's go. Sixty. If you don't know anything about the ninety or the seventy, uh, this is a rear-wheel drive architecture. So that's a big thumbs up for driving dynamics. Again, all-wheel drive is standard. And just from an overall handling perspective, these drive like Mazdas, meaning that you have good road feel. You do feel the road, you feel, feel the bumps. You get fairly firm steering. It is not quick at all as far as the steering goes, but it does feel very, very good on a road like this. Again, I'm feeling the bumps through here. The other thing about what Mazda does is they control body motions very, very well. This, this for a big honking SUV, this does not it's not floaty boaty as you go in the turns it doesn't roll a whole lot as you would expect a big car like this so that's really what mazda has been about is giving you some road feel giving you good steering making sure all of your inputs go together as far as the steering and the throttle and it's just a lot of fun to drive no it's not a sports sedan by no means but yeah it's just very engaging to drive but for a big car, you're gonna be very happy with this as far as driving engagement on a road like this. And this is where the transmission is fine. Uh, you know, when you're tooling along right here, the transmission is fairly responsive. It's a downshift there. And pulls really, really good. That's the nice thing about this six cylinder is regardless of where it is in the revs, uh, it's just always pulling with really good torque. So that's a big thumbs up there. All right, let's 
let's go ahead and check out the brakes here. Oh, excellent, excellent brake as far as power. It's a little soft. The pedal is a little soft, but pretty linear. Uh, a little grabby too. So if you test drive a CX-70 or a 90, you're gonna go, oh, these feel a little grabby. But after a couple days driving, you sort of calibrate your foot. And, uh, but yeah, the brakes are really good as far as bringing this 5,000 pound beast down. Let's turn on these turn signals. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't remember that being as loud and obnoxious in the 90. Okay, let's put it back into sport mode here. And I did mention earlier we had the shifter, the paddle shifter, so let's give them a go. All right, here we go. Downshift to two. Six gear, just hovering along here in six gear. Let's go ahead and downshift. All right, so pretty, pretty quick on the shifts. I mean, it's not something i mean i know a lot of people will enjoy those i, I personally i don't use uh the manual shift feature in the mazdas too much let's go ahead and go back to normal mode kind of cruise in here let's go ahead and set the cruise control set all right got that set right there let's go ahead and set the lane centering all right now let's just uh kick back here it's a pretty decent job. It's hugging the left side there. Now it's kind of back in the center. It's going to yell at me here pretty soon to grab the wheel. There we go. Okay, again, Mazda offers this. Uh, we do have a very good stop and go, sort of a traffic kind of thing. It works really, really well. Mazda has come a long way on the stop and go part. The lane centering, you know, it's there if you want to use it. I still feel that it tugs too much on your hands if you're just you know trying to drive yourself it's still kind of tugging along with you so that's there now out here on the highway the cx90 cx70 very quiet i didn't measure how loud this is but i'm thinking 68 ish decibels it's these falcon 245 21s seem to be pretty quiet if you do live in a northern climate where you're going to get some snow i would highly advise you're going to need some winters or all 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 weather tires I, I can't imagine these being very good as far as uh in in snow but uh pretty quiet out here on the highway cruising is not a problem passing is not a problem again settles down really nicely about 1800 rpms at 70 so pretty relaxed cruiser you got thick glass Again, just very nice and comfortable. You get good visibility out the back. Mazda does a good job with these very large mirrors on both sides for visibility there. Over the shoulder, decent. So no issues here as far as traveling. Again, you're gonna get that excellent 30 MPGs, 29 MPGs that we've experienced out on the highway. So seat comfort is pretty good. I think Mazda has done a little bit with these seats to to, to soften them up a little bit these feel a little bit softer but i can you know i could be just imagining that uh, not a lot of side bolsters so uh, again that gives you that sort of that comfort as far as the seat goes these are ventilated i just found even with the ventilation on a hot day i still found my back kind of sticking to these so you know keep that in mind again that may just be me all right, let's do some final thoughts here on the CX-70. I think Mazda probably knows the North American market better than us critics, as far as they are not gonna take any criticism for, hey, we finally have a vehicle that leads in space in its class. So I, again, I think this is a better two row when it comes to 
people who like their space than a three row where they go, ah, that back seat's a little tight anyway. So the other way I think you can look at this is instead of this being a CX-90 with a seat delete, I think over time, the CX-70 is gonna bring folks into the showroom and it's gonna be, hey, the CX-90 is actually a CX-70 with a seat add. I think the CX-70 looks better. It's got a more youthful, more sporty appearance. The 90 looks a little bit more mature, like a three row family hauler would be. But at the end of the day, they are the same car. They both drive really, really well. I would not be spooked by the transmission. I think Mazda has got that to the point now where it is not worth complaining about. But we want to know what you think. Put your comments down below. We'd love to hear your questions and comments, whether you own one of these, a 90, considering one. Again, thanks for coming along today and have a great day, morning or evening, wherever you may be.